Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, dwyervip.com, free site. Today is December the 7th, 2017. Let's talk boxing, but first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. First, to the crypto gamblers out there, I recognize that there's some cryptocurrency people who, like me, dabble in crypto or invest in crypto. You know, these are fascinating times. Uh, Bitcoin is on a tier. Just know there's a sentiment out there. It's my sentiment, for example, that the real action is going to be in altcoins, right? The Bitcoin people, and I'm a Bitcoin investor, the Bitcoin people want you to believe that, um, you know, the slow transactions, the expensive transactions, the method of transaction, problems with Bitcoin uh, don't matter because Bitcoin is digital gold. It's a store of value, right? To that, I say that's ridiculous. Understand right now you have altcoins out there. The information's just not out there. You have altcoins out there that give you near instantaneous transactions. Please, folks, look at Dash. Please look at PIVX. Look at Bitcoin Cash. They give you much quicker transaction times at a much cheaper price than Bitcoin. In other words, they give you more than Bitcoin gives you. And they allow you, because of the lower transaction fees, to actually use the coins for micro payments. What does that mean? That means buying that coffee at Starbucks. That means buying that gallon of gas at the gas station. I'm just telling you, enough people now are owning cryptocurrencies. The total market cap is north of $300 billion. Right? And understand, that's low compared to the market cap of things like Apple. Right? Just take a look at it. Amazon. Cryptocurrency is going to be several times the market cap of any individual company. Right? So just understand that as the world adjusts, as you get, you know, point of sale, adoption of cryptocurrency, I agree with Tim Draper. Five years from now, most of the people are going to be using cryptocurrency. It's more convenient, quite frankly, than using a credit card with the right point of sale technology. So I wouldn't, in a knee-jerk fashion, invest in Bitcoin. I think investors need to look at Bitcoin Cash, look at Dash, look at PIVX, Look at the cryptocurrencies that have faster transaction times, cheaper transaction times, and that offer privacy, right? Bitcoin Cash doesn't, Dash does, PIVX does, Zcash does, Zencash does. Understand the real action in cryptocurrency, in my opinion, from a technological standpoint, is in the altcoins. Okay, let's get to boxing. First, read some of the comments on the Lomachenko uh, Rigondeau fight. Uh, researched some interviews the fighters gave. Rigondeau is claiming that he hasn't even looked at film of Lomachenko. No, I don't believe him. But he's convinced that he can adapt during the fight, right? Um, you know, he must think that this is an amateur fight or something like that. Folks, it's a pro fight. Understand, that attitude opens the door for a possible strategy by Lomachenko, who is ambidextrous, to fight this fight in stages, right? Let's get into boxing strategy, for example. This is the same thing that had... Marvelous Marvin Hagler fighting in a different stance the first two rounds against Ray Leonard. It didn't work out for Hagler, but just understand, fighters do this from time to time. Loma could easily come out the first two, three rounds and fight a style. That's not going to be the style he decides to fight in the later part of the fight. 
In other words, he could force the old man to adapt to a style he's not even going to use later in the fight. Right? Let's hope that Guillermo Rigondeau isn't that silly to not have studied Lomachenko. Let's go one step further, too. You know, I know they tell you that a day is a day. That 37 years old is 37 years old. Right? Now, that might work in the real world. This is the boxing world. I'm just telling you that guys age at different rates based on their size in boxing. In other words, at the heavyweight division, to me, the guys age slower. You see a heavyweight in his early 30s, he's a young pup. Guys like Vladimir Klitschko, Vitaly Klitschko, Tony Thompson, right? They're still competitive. Amir Manzur, they're still competitive in their late 30s, early 40s. But that's not true in the lower weights. I'm just telling you, a day is not a day in boxing. Guys age faster in the lower weights. You show me a finesse guy at 37 fighting in the 120s, right, or 130. And I'm going to show you a guy who's old for the weight class. Just think it through in terms of boxing history, right? It's harder to be 37 at the lighter weights than it is at the heavier weights, where power matters more. You know what they say? Power is the last to go, right? So, in my opinion, Rigondeau, who hasn't fought on a regular basis, right? The guy has fought something like three rounds over the last two years, something like that, right? The fact that he's older at a lighter weight doesn't bode well for him against a much younger opponent, Right? Food for thought. Obviously, I like Lomachenko in that fight. I'm going with the favorite there. <clears throat> Let's talk about WBA cruiserweight champion. He's unbeaten, folks. Dortikos. Unier Dortikos. And he's fighting unbeaten IBF cruiserweight champion Murat Gassiev. Now, I'm just going to talk about my impression of who has an advantage in specific areas, then I'm just going to tell you who I think is going to win the fight. But I need for you to understand that the casinos have priced this fight correctly. They sense that this fight's not going to go the distance. Right? They've made the props such that you're not getting value on even the knockout props. So this is that dangerous play. This is that play for only gamblers who understand they could lose every event that they bet on. This is only for gamblers who know there are no short things when it comes to gambling. Whoever you take in this fight could well lose, and they could well lose early. Look at the KO percentages on both of these guys. Right? I'm going to make a pick here. I'm going to pick a side because, hell, I'll take risks. Right? But just understand, this is not a fight to bet the mortgage on. Right? This is not the fight to bet Junior's college fund on. Let's talk about Dorticos. By the way, in my favorites folder here on YouTube, you'll actually see a couple of interesting videos the best one is Murat Gassiev versus Yonier Dortikos, their top 10 KOs, right? They include Gassiev's recent KO of Wilderchik. They include Dortikos' KO of Kudryasov. So, Dortikos, in my opinion, and by the way, both guys are big men for cruiserweight. Look at the heights. You wonder how they make the weight. So Dorticos, he has the better straight right. 
Folks, Dordikos' straight right hand is, in my opinion, a plus. It's one of the best punches in boxing. Right? He uses it to literally end his fight against Kudryasov. Right? Who has never been hit like that before in his life. I encourage you to look at that KO. Dordikos also has the better jab. <coughs> he has, in my opinion, the better defense from distance. He is excellent. Excellent. At cutting off the ring. Folks, this is how you cut off the ring. Right? I want you to look at this guy's tapes. If you're fighting him, you simply cannot allow him to get ahead of steam. Right? You cannot fight him on your back foot for extended periods of time. Because this guy's too good at cutting off the ring. This guy's emotional. Right? He gets emotionally invested in fights. What I want you to do is to look at the end of the first round. I also have the Dordikos Kudryasov full fight film in my favorites folder here online. I need to have you look at the end of the first round of that fight. Look at Dordikos. Then look at Dordikos. The camera cuts away, but look at Dordikos when he gets Kudryasov on the canvas. This is a guy who's emotionally invested. This is different than, let's say, a Floyd Mayweather, who in fights he's dominating, where he's spanking the other guy, right? Will look like he's making a bank transaction, right? Is cool, calm, and collected focused. It's math for him. With this guy, it's a little bit more than math. He's emotionally invested in the fight. Only one of his fights has not ended by KO. This is a huge puncher at cruiserweight. Right? Now, all of that said, knowing that this guy has a great straight right hand, prodigious power, a certain emotional fearlessness, the firm belief that he's the best, the ability to cut off the ring, he's not afraid to be on his front foot, folks. All of that said, I'm taking IBF cruiserweight champion Marat Gassiev in this fight. Now, let me say this. No one's told me this. I'm just speculating here. But I suspect that even though Gassia fights out of an orthodox stance, I suspect that he's really a southpaw. Right? He's the one who has the better left hand. Right? It's two left hands that he throws that ends that fight against Wolderchick. He seems really comfortable with it. More importantly, he has... We'll call it the better movement. There's something about his movement. He's lighter on his feet. He's more coordinated. He just seems to me to be more in control of his balance and his coordination than Dordikos does. Let me also say too, he has the better angles. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but understand it's the angles that create the opening. In other words, Dordikos is in front of you. He's about a little bit in front of you, right? Arm's length away. That's where he wants to be. Gassius, Gassiev is a little bit more deceptive. In other words, he's not right in front of you. He's a little bit off at the side. You have to go looking for him. Right? Wilderchick, Dennis Lebedev. Right? Both of those guys couldn't just close their eyes and throw a hard shot at some blurry figure in front of them.
because Gassiev is slick. He's a little bit off at the side. He knows how to hide his head behind a shoulder. Let me say the better angles makes him, in my opinion, harder to hit than Dorticos. <clears throat> He's less predictable than Dorticos. He throws the shorter punches than Dorticos. He's better in close than Dorticos. In, in my opinion, this fight's going to be a positioning fight. In other words, Gassiev is going to know that he can't trudge along on the outside and stay outside like Kadryasov tried to against Dordikos. Right? He understands, though, that if he gets a little bit close to Dordikos, who does have a pretty good right hook, you'll notice he lands the right hook in his last fight before he finishes the guy with a straight right hand. Right? But I believe a guy like Dordikos, who clearly has an A-plus str straight right hand that he likes to throw from distance, can be thrown off key if an opponent isn't staying at distance. If the opponent is an angles guy who gets too close for Dordikos to extend his arms. Right? Both of these guys see themselves as alpha. In my opinion, Gassiev has the better upper body movement. I think what these fighters do between punches matters. I prefer Gassiev's balance, Gassiev's angles, Gassiev's unpredictability. So I'm going to take the IBF. Cruiserweight champion here. He's the mild favorite in casinos. But I'm doing so knowing that this is a high-risk play. Let me just say that the casinos have priced this so well that you aren't even really able to hedge the play. So this is high risk. I don't recommend this for casual bettors. I like Gassiev here, the IBF Cruiserweight Champion, to make it to the finals of the WBSS Cruiserweight Tournament. I'm picking him over unbeaten WBA Champion Unier Dordikos. Let me hear from you. That's how I see it. Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.